Hello everyone, I'm John Higgins, contributing writer to Film and TV Now, and I'm delighted to welcome one and all to this interview special with actor Russell Shaw, who has established himself as one of the most reliable talents when it comes to top British indie cinema. In recent years, he has collaborated with Howard Ford on the likes of Venture Boys and No Lockdown Hauntings, as well as the stunning Warren Dudley indie drama Six Years Gone, about a mother's search for a missing daughter. Amongst his next films are Witch, a medieval horror fantasy which bows in the summer of 2023. Russell, warm welcome to you. Thank you, John, and thank you so much for taking the time to interview me. I really appreciate it. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, okay, so let's start with Witch, because, um, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I understand it's your biggest role to date. So. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about this film, which we, we're hopefully going to see in, in, we're going to get this summer. Well, it was filmed on an incredible set, film set. It was absolutely huge. I've never seen anything like it. Um, it's a medieval horror fantasy directed by Craig Hind and Mark Zabit, Zamit, sorry to say. Um, great team behind it. And um, yeah, I can't really say much more really it's going to be released in the summer and um it's uh i think it's a fantastic storyline um we've got david babaloon on board as well who has a phd in storytelling um it's an incredible story i've i mean i'm sure you're aware john like me i mean you're a bigger film buff than me but we know a lot about films and um, you think of all the genres out there and the different types of films. And sometimes you think, oh, I've, I've seen that sort of film before. I've seen that sort of storyline before. Well, with which, set in 1575, I don't know many films that are similar to which in terms of storyline, in terms of, um, yeah, in, just in terms of story. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think that's a good enough taster. I think people are intrigued now. I mean, I think that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes less is more. So we'll see what happens. So let's yeah. um, let's go more to things that you do know. I mean, let's start off with the obvious question is what got you into acting in the first place? Um, I was working as a, a welder at the time. I was living in Cornwall. I was working for a company in Bodwin called uh, Bodwin called Games for Accessories. And um, I was doing like 60 hour shifts. And I used to go home for Christmas, see my mom at Christmas. My mom lived in Yorkshire with my sister and my brother. And I just turned around, I think it was in my mid twenties and just said, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't know what I'm doing. And I had two cars, had a motorbike and a nice place to live, uh, sharing with this Irish guy, lovely cottage. And I just said, I just don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't, I don't feel fulfilled, I don't feel happy. And she said, well, what did you like at school? And I said, I remember doing a few acting classes at school, thought nothing more of it. Love the escapism, the creativity, this chance to just, you know, get away from, you know, childhood, that kind of thing, everything that was going on there. And um, she said, well, why don't you do a, a course? So it wasn't easy. It wasn't like going back into drama school or anything like that. I had to do an access course at first to get back into education so it was a long 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 process and I had counseling and therapy and yeah it, it's not as easy as just saying oh yeah I'll go I'll do a, an acting course it's not as easy as that so I did a national diploma in performing arts at um, Arden School of Theatre ended up with six distinctions um, and I really struggled but to get six distinctions was fantastic because it gave me my choice of which university and then I went to Leicester de Montfort and did a four-year degree at, in performing arts there as well. I think I think I've said this before in uh, uh, other interviews. I think that the main training though is when you're just out there, you know, working with the directors, working with the working with the other actors, you know, learning about the knockbacks, learning about the networking, um, looking after yourself. Just being out in in the real world, and that is the real training. And uh, yeah, I continue, especially in film. I continue to just, you know, soak knowledge in like a sponge. To be mm -hmm. quite honest with you, yeah. yeah, I think that's that's a good thing to know. I think the case is just doing it. So I think some people, you know, they, you know, it depends where you come from. And there's four basic elements to act in: good voice, ability to 
take direction, good ability to read, and then to feel comfortable on stage and and camera. So that's cool. Now, you mentioned to me the other day, which was a bit of a surprise, I understand that you were involved with the film Caligula with Malcolm McDowell and Helen Mirren. And yeah. with, I, I was kind of curious because you were posting something, some credits. I understand there's a brand new version of the film premiering at Cannes in this year. So yes. just briefly tell me a bit more about, well, what what did you do with this? I mean, was it the original film? I mean, did you work with McDowell and Miriam? What, tell us a bit more. Thank you, John. And just to say, I, I start to feel a bit more relaxed now. I think I was quite nervous when I, because I've always wanted to, to be interviewed by you, uh, just to add that... Um, when I've done interviews with other people, they say, oh, yeah, we'll be editing it. Don't worry about anything. You can make mistakes, you know, panic, brain fog. But with you, you said, no, we just go straight through. We interview, yeah. we film you, and then yeah. it's out there. But yeah. I'm starting to feel more relaxed. So in Good. answer well, to I'm your glad question, to hear that. <laughs> Caligula um, is a remake. Um, Simon Moorhead, who is the producer of uh, TBC Audios, uh, he does audio books, um and lots of short plays and theatre. He's done loads of Simon Moorhead, a very interesting guy, and Dave McKean. They were brought on board. I don't know the all ins and outs of it, but they were brought on board to just um film this sequence. It's just the opening sequence that we're in. But for me, a big fan of Mirror Mask, I don't know if you remember Mirror Mask, John, um, which was produced by Simon Moorhead and Dave McKean. Um they um I've lost my train of thought now. Um, I work, I got to work with them. I got to work with the amazing Dave McKean. And it was more mask work. So you don't actually see me. You will see me behind a mask. And it was the opening sequence, the remake of Caligula, that will be shown uh, at Cannes in 2023. So it's just the opening sequence. I didn't get to work with Mirren or McDowell or anybody like that. But um, what an amazing thing to be part of. Okay. Um, so yeah. um, just interrupting you. So what? This is a reimaging of the original 1980 film. So they've what they've presumably that one was very controversial because it was the sex with the violence was the big thing. But yeah, incredible. This is brand yes. new. Okay, well we'll 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 check that out. I mean, I I, I thought it was actually a different thing, but um, it looks really good. Anyway, let's move on to another director yes. you've worked with, um, and let's talk about Howard Ford. I mean. Amazing guy. I mean, I, I love the guy. I mean, I'm, I've been honoured to sort of promote his movies in the last couple of years with films like Adventure Boys and, you know, The Lockdown Hauntings. I mean, what what is it that makes him such a great director and collaborator? I think I think one of the things that actors feel um, that I admire him for is he's, he's just so down to earth. Um, he's incredibly down to earth and just so likable. He's got a real, real charisma about him, and um, I like his. Um, I like uh, um, how he sort of uh, views acting and film and uh, the messages that he wants to send. And he's just um, he's just got such a great, great heart as well as incredible talent. But I think that's what you know. There's lots of film directors out there that've got amazing talent, but there's something about his, he's got real understanding and empathy and um, he's just such a caring guy as well. You can approach him on set and say, oh, can, can I suggest this? And he's he's very open to it, very open to it and uh, very supporting and, and he's just incredibly clever. He's, yeah, I just, I think that's, I think the main thing I answered at first, John, was he's just, he's just very um, down to earth. There's no airs and graces about him at all. Um, he, he's very approachable. Mm. Yeah, I think he's. I have to agree with you because I've 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 known him for a while now because of Adventure Boys. We met at the at a, a special screening of Adventure Boys, and I I always admired him because he's he's so knowledgeable. But also, I think his practicality, the practicality of him going out there with films like Ledge, and of course the upcoming Escape, which um, I was lucky enough to see some footage from. I mean, he's. He's absolutely got a great visual eye, so it's it's I can I am I'm fully in agreement with him. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the craft again. Um, now you've worked in theatre and voiceover as well as film. I mean, what sort of challenges stand out for you in the context of each? Um, theatre and film. What well, is voiceover? The, I should say voiceover. 
theatre and voiceover. Yeah. And what was the question? You've worked in theatre and voiceover as well as film. I mean, what's in the context of each? Let's talk about each of the three. What do you find are the challenges in each? Challenges in each. Oh my god. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> Theatre and, oh, my God, what are the challenges? Theatre is very different to film. I was speaking to somebody on set the other day about because they were feeling quite nervous, and I said, imagine you're at a theatre, you, you you learn the play, the curtain draws, you're on stage, two hours, hour, hour and a half, whatever. You forget your lines, you know, there's no escape. But with film, it's a lot of stop-start. You can go back to your lines. You can think about the process, the arc of your character. You can, you know, you've got chance to really sort of embody the character you've got chance to have a pause you can think about things uh, about the storyline and your motives and all that sort of thing where theater is just you know once you uh, once them curtains are drawn back that's it you know any mistakes and they're they're amplified um voiceover oh gosh john um you're a lot more tougher than uh, angelina lapatina um Gosh, uh, voiceover. I love all three. Um, I don't know what to say, John. Right. I'm aware. No, that that's fine. No that's fine. That's fine, Russell. I'm sure that you know. In in private conversation, you probably will know. It. I mean, it's one of the. It's you know, it's a fair question. I mean, if you can't answer it, that's fine. Um, but let's let's focus on one specific of theatre which you did. You played the lead role of Benedict. In Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, there was a version which Shakespeare assisted at London Independent Film Festival last year called Much Ado, which was like a rugby tour thing. But going back to the version you were in, um, what was the experience like for that? And what were the challenge? What are your challenges when you're doing classical texts? I mean, what do you find are the big things about that? Well, the story goes that when Nicholas Quirt, the director, said to me, I'd like you to play the lead role of Benedict, I said, is that a woman? That's no word of a lie. Um, I had no knowledge of Shakespeare whatsoever. Um, I had no real knowledge of speaking in Shakespearean, uh, Shakespeare language. I um, I don't know. I just find these things come naturally, and I don't have a great deal of knowledge. It's the same when I first did mask work, um, um, performing the Pericles Prince of Tyre at the Goethe. Yeah, I mean, um, Austria or Switzerland. I just, um, it's a lot of text. I learned a lot of text. I think I watched, um, I think I watched the Kenneth Branagh version of Much Ado About Nothing a few times. Um, there's a lot of comedy. There's a lot of seriousness. Um, timing, timing of the comedy. Um yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, well, um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit. I mean, obviously, you, you know, knowing Howard Ford's, you know, practicalities of doing the act. I mean, would you be interested in developing projects in a producing capacity for yourself and others? Is that something that you'd be interested in doing? No, I don't think I've ever felt interested in doing that, actually, John. Mm -hmm. No. OK, no worries. No, it's fine. It's just a fair question anyway, so... And um, I just wanted to ask you as well, um, you know, are there particular issues and themes that you, you are keen to explore in your work when, when you're faced with a script and stuff? Are there things that stand out for you that you think, actually, this is an interesting theme to explore? Or is there something that you, you know, what draws you to a script? Um, well, like, for instance, we just wrapped on... Um solace of a bus stop um, which is a short film with rhoda wilson productions um really great woman actually very interesting woman I, I liked her a lot and then she put a nice team together and it was also um a gentleman called um oh god uh what's his name i can't remember his name now um solace of a bus stop why did I, I found that um, I would, when I'm able to dig deep with my character, when I say dig deep is um, I'm able to um, explore my emotions and really 
get into the part is something that's if it's really gritty for me not necessarily gritty all the time but if it's a really gritty role where I can go there when I say go there some actors kind of can be scared to explore their emotions I think down because of all the sort of therapy and work I've done on myself and the various courses that I've done I find it very easy to be completely vulnerable with my emotions and um when it's a character that's got I mean, for instance, Marcus in Solace of a Bus Stop, it's going to be a really, um, I think it's going to be really gritty and powerful. I didn't realise how much so uh, until I was on set. Um, so in terms of those kind of roles, I think it's that really telling the truth about th that that particular character, like uh, Boris in Boris the Rottweiler, uh, truth-telling and having a chance to just really go there with my emotions no no um no inhibitions whatsoever just to go there and i've often had people saying on oh my god how did you do that well that's that's part of the craft that's you know that's what you got to do uh there was someone who asked me to be in a film the other day and they wanted me to cry but i kind of read the role and i just thought you, you know this is not for me but i would have been happy to do that i don't, don't have a problem with that but I, i'm also um i mean howard says this a lot about me he says that i'm very versatile he says he, he say he thinks i can do anything um, which is really nice to hear. and um, But I think that's my main kind of roles, and that's the kind of roles that I'm attracted to when I'm really telling the truth about the character and uh, ex really going there and exploring my emotions. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Oh, yeah, Have no, I... it's good. I mean, you've, you've, you've really expressed how you feel. I mean, it, it is a very clarity thing, and every actor has the same, a different approach to it. So that's not a, that's an actually very good answer. So it's very constructive. So you've, you've presented your, you've printed your case very well. Um, got about three more questions before we wrap up, but I just wanted to uh, ask you about the whole issue, the thing about independent film festivals. I mean, how do you, how do you feel about them and how do they help actors and filmmakers like yourself? Um, well, I do know that Solace of a Bus Stop is going to the film festival. It's going to be going to all the film festivals. How does it help us? Well, it gets us out there. You know, it's a chance to be seen by a, a wider audience. Definitely, it's, it's an opportunity. I've never actually um, attended any myself. I'm aware of Natasha Marberger at the London Independent Film Festival. But I think it's, it's just a great opportunity to just get further out there. Um, and just going back to your question about theatre and film and the, and the difference, et cetera, you know, with theatre, you, you, you're you cast, you rehearse, you're part of a team, you do the shows, you might get to go and perform in London or maybe New York, which nearly happened for me once with a theatre play. And, and then that's kind of it. But with film, you know, it's out there, it's on IMDb, it's at the cinemas, it goes to film festivals, it could go to Cannes. And, um, yeah, that's another difference between film and theatre um, as well. But, yeah, just that it's just a, a chance to be in perhaps um, get seen by a wider audience. Mm -hmm. OK, so I've got two final questions to wrap up. I mean, you've mentioned about one of the short films that's upcoming. I mean, in terms of features, what's next after which for you? Well, I'm just waiting to hear back from, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know if I told you that I'm at Actually, I've actually cast in Escape as well, which was originally called The Canyon, Howard Ford's film. It's now called Escape. So I'm cast in Escape. And I think he's going to be probably talking about Escape and also Dark Game is going to be shown at Cannes. So that's absolutely fantastic. I'm just waiting to hear back, actually, on a TV series. It's a big TV series. I can't say any more. But if, I'm fil if, if, I, get the, if I get the role, um, I'm filming in Greece for... Four weeks, five weeks. I actually emailed my my, uh, my agent this morning, and I'm still in the running for this. And then Fiji for about three weeks, which would be absolutely fantastic. Logistically, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare because I got so much, um, so much um, sort of plans and and um, things booked over the next two months. But obviously, if I get the job, uh, you know, all that goes out of the window. I'll be going. So I'm waiting to hear on that. Which is the big one, of course. Um, I think um, I think it's got a lot of potential, a lot of potential. Um, as I said before, I've never seen film sets like like them, uh, the film set that we were on. I've never seen a film set like that before. And um, it's all about the story. 
it really is all about the story. And I really like my character as well. And I hope that comes across. Um, Colors to the Bus Stops going to uh, film festivals. The writer was Tony Highland. It was hard just to, usually in these interviews, you said, oh, you'll have this question, you have this question, you have this question, and you got a chance to do a bit of research with you asking me questions on the spot. I was just like, oh, my God, I know the answer to this. But, oh, yeah, so I'm sure this has all been filmed as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tony Highland has actually got an MBE. I don't know what he's got an MBE in, but he's Tony Highland MBE. Google him. He is the writer of Solace of a Bus Stop. It's based on a true story. And I, the reason I mention that is because I was quite blown away in filming and reading the story and, and see where my character went with it. And I just thought, my God, this is actually very, very powerful stuff. Obviously, it's down to the editing now, but it's a um, very powerful uh, um, short film people think it's a feature film it's not it's a short film um yeah so there's a few things there um very okay. happy to be in a scene with howard Ford. Right. i'm very picky about the films that i'm in i've been offered quite a few um roles recently but i have to feel it and i have to see how they conduct themselves on social media as well it's not a case of i won't just say yes to anything anymore i won't do that so, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. But I'm okay. feeling very okay. um, excited for the future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen, my final question is this, and it's really just a recap, really. What are you most proud of about your career to date? Nice. I like that. That's a nice question. It's not kind of uh, <laughs> going to throw me. <laughs> oh, proudest role to date. Well, just generally about your career, you know, if there's, you know, generally what what do you feel is, what do you feel are your best ever achievements so far? I think Witch is up there. I mean, it's an incredible role. Medieval horror fantasy. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Um, there's a few. I mean, I'm very, I'll always be very, very fond of uh, my role in Adventure Boys, the comedy. Yeah. Um, I'd have to say Boris the Rottweiler. It was a 15-minute monologue, and I gave it everything. And it was on. Um, it was in front of 20 cameramen in Sky Studios, on all fours as a dog, and um, I gave it my all. And there's a lot of me in that performance because it was based as well on um, an experience I had when I was a child, and um, I. People often watch that. I, I sometimes play a role and then I don't really sort of acknowledge myself. And it's only later when people say to me, oh, my God, how did you do that? How do you remember those lines? And, yeah, I, I would say Boris the Rottweiler, the 15-minute monologue. Sky Arts bought the rights to it. It was on TV for the best part of four years. Um, and um, I have to say that because it was a 15-minute monologue and I had so many lines and so many thought processes and uh, I think I mentioned that I used Stanislavski technique in motion memory when I when I was ripping the dogs apart, so to speak. I was actually ripping the bullies apart. So, I, you know, I'm sure we've all had um, a difficult childhood in some way or other. And we all, you know, we all have our stories. And um, I was, um, I've mentioned it on a post, actually. And sometimes I regret posting on social media, but I was actually, as long as I can remember at school, especially when I was about 11 years old, there was always two guys that would just, you know, go, sure, get over here and just jump on me and, you know, kick me and all that sort of thing. And I never had a chance. And I was quite sort of uh, suppressed, were well, very suppressed, unbelievably suppressed. And um, so when when I was playing uh, Boris and Boris the Royal, I don't know if you've seen it, John. Um, everybody that's seen it just thinks it was incredible. Is um, It was a chance for me to to get these bullies back it was a very cathartic experience and um i watch it nowadays john and even to this day i'm i'm just gobsmacked and it, it's almost like I, I have this really weird feeling in my body like is that is that is that really me do, do i have that did i have that much anger or and um it it, it moves me every time mm -hmm. um even now so i'd have to say that's my proudest moment but of course you know working with howard and, and being cast in witch and 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 starting to make my way into feature films because that only started in 2018 um howard giving my, me my chance in feature film and now i'm just kind of 
you know, learning and, and, mm. and stepping out there and putting myself okay. out there and just um, embodying the whole sort of experience. Um, okay. Yeah. Adventure well, Boys was obviously a proud moment yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, well, listen, Russell, you've got everything to be proud of. It's always a pleasure catching up with you on the circuit and just saying hello. So it's always a pleasure to see you at certain um, events. Um, so thank you for your time today. Um, just wrapping up, you can see interviews like this as well as a replay of this on my YouTube channel, John Higgins Film Review. And you can read some of my articles, interviews and reviews also on the website, www.filmandtvnow.com. And of course, last year we launched the film resource website, What Movie, which you can look at www.whatmovie.co.uk. So thank you very much, Russell. And thanks again for watching. Thank you, John. That was pretty nerve wracking, more so than Angelina, I tell you. I didn't realize you right. <laughs> I wasn't ready for those questions, but thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I hope I didn't make too much of a fool yeah. of myself. That's that's great. Anyway, cheers, uh, Russell. Cheers.